I'm Benny Redden, I'm from uh, Visualize HR, and we have uh, built a cloud data platform that encompasses human resources information. You know, we say human resources information. Uh, when we say human resources information, that means more than just human resources. That's uh, applicant tracking, onboarding, uh, benefits, core HR, payroll, and it goes on uh, to a gamut of about 50 or so different silo types of systems. But uh, what we've done at Visualize HR, first it was, it was to integrate them, and next it's to consolidate the information between these systems in such a way that the data can present, be presented to executive management for decision-making capabilities. And the way this started for me was uh, I was working in ERP systems uh, at the beginning of my career, uh, from, first from the very small network-based HR systems up through huge e e enterprise resource planning systems. And there was a point along the way where I thought, this is really cool. These enterprise resource planning systems are mature. I was really naive. Uh, and the, the data that we're keeping and the complexity of the data was sufficient that we could present this data to executives. And from a, a, per, a people perspective, they could start making strategic decisions about what to do with their enterprise. I went out like any enthusiastic youngster and I started consulting doing this. And it took me 10 years to find out that it wasn't possible. Uh, the ERP systems were very closed. They really were, they resisted getting the data out. Uh, and in addition, uh, the ERP system wasn't the only thing out there. I would have a core ERP HR system, but I would get a best of breed applicant tracking system. And I would surround these, this ERP with a lot of satellite systems, just uh, making the integration problem uh, greater and greater difficulty. So that was, that was the final bright idea I had in there. Integration became the clear hurdle that had to be overcome. Went out for about 10 years working in a company that specialized in uh, HR integrations. I founded a company and they're, they're still going, they're working purely in integration, but now we're at a point where I think integration is largely a solved problem. Uh, the, if you come out with an HR system today, if you do not come out with an API that is approachable, then you've lost table stakes and people are not going to buy your system. In addition, there are vendors out there like WSO2 and their competitors that I won't name that have been building integration tools for quite some time. So a few years ago, I decided I would pivot back to this original dream of collecting the data and presenting it to uh, executives to make strategi um, strategic decision making in their organizations. And what we've come up with, we'll show you a little bit of the fast forward, is a functional architecture that at first glance, you know, it's a multi-tenant, cloud-native architecture, but at first glance, it looks like this is all about AWS. You've got queues, you've got API gateway, you've got S3 buckets into the file transfer family, but truly the heart and soul of all of this is serverless functions written in Ballerina. Every one of these AWS artifacts is connected by and orchestrated by Ballerina. And we got here through two or three different architectural iterations. I'll try to go through you know, three years of architecture in about 30 seconds. Oh wait, first, why, the first uh, predecessor to that is why did we choose Ballerina? Uh, I had worked for several years, lots of years, uh, in Java. Rich history with Java. The last uh, payroll HR system that I had worked on was written almost entirely in Java with a lot of Postgres uh, stored procedures built in and very, very familiar with and comfortable with Java. Uh, and in fact, uh, as, as uh, Samir had mentioned, uh, I've been working with one of the early versions of the WSO2 ESB. We wrote all of our connectors, all of our mediators in Java. And so, knew the Java side of things inside out, could uh, dream of that in my sleep without waking up screaming. But there was a part of it that I did wake up screaming. The challenge with Java was always versions. That uh, every six weeks you came out with some kind of version change. Either the Java version changed, or your vendor said you must change your Java version, or you had a security alert that you had to go uh, patch, or one of your libraries, Spring, HTTP, what's, what have you, all of them would come up with some kind of security uh, or some kind of patch or some kind of attention you had to pay, and you stayed on an upgrade treadmill forever rather than spending your time working on extending the functionality of your product line. And around 2018, uh, WSO2 mentioned in passing this ballerina product that they were working on. It was extremely attractive. Even early on, they were saying that it had batteries included 
that it would have functionality in there that would uh, keep you from needing to go pile in a whole bunch of spring, build your test tools around uh, all of this that you had built. And the networking strength, uh, not only did it did they say it was going to be there, but it has been there. And then we progressed into uh, code to cloud with it. Uh, we'll show you that, that progression here when I do show you the different uh, types of uh, iterations we went through architecturally. And then the available packages, that has, that has been fantastic. It's stuff that I did not have to build. When I started using Java with AWS, for instance, uh, I had to go write Signature v4 uh, to get any of my Java components to connect with an AWS artifact. And while AWS has fantastic instructions for this, it's still a lot of trial and error before you get it right. So our first iteration leveraged the fact that we had a lot of uh, WSO2 ESB, uh, Enterprise Integrator, experience. A lot of Saxon built in there to do data transformations. Uh, we had uh, in a database a dynamic orchestration so that we could pick up segments, uh, little snippets of uh, Synapse uh, code that we could assemble on the fly into an orchestration. And uh, we could then, uh, one of the other things we did was uh, with the data services server, we had uh, delta detection, change detection between payloads. And so we would use uh, those legacy things that we knew and we wrote uh, ballerina services. All of this sitting on an Amazon EC2 instance and all of them running the ballerina code running on different ports for different tenants and different processes. And you know, for a first round, this was pretty cool. But we did not like the fact that that EC2 instance was running 24 by 7 by 365. And so we wanted to get away from that. Uh, I'd been talking with uh, Asanka uh, somewhere in that time about the cellular architecture. So our first migration was to try and, and uh, put together uh, a cell-based architecture. So we moved to uh, Kubernetes uh, with the same kind and moved out of any of the uh, uh, enterprise integrator components and all into Kubernetes. And this is where I did wake up screaming quite a bit. Kubernetes is fantastic, but Helm is not your friend. Uh, so you would, you would work on the complexity of this. We, I thought this was wonderful. I thought it was a, a very good cell architecture, but the, the two areas that uh, I felt we needed to improve were uh, first to continue to work to get off that EC2 instance and uh, second to get away from the complexity of uh, orchestrating all of these things together. Uh, and what you'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll give you kind of the spoiler alert again, what you see between all of these architectural iterations that is the same is that we have this database with a, a very normalized HR data model and you have Ballerina in its different instances. Now this, uh, at the Kubernetes side, the Ballerina code, we did use the code to cloud and generated the Kubernetes, uh, where previously we would just create HTTP services. And then, uh, back in this current iteration of our functional architecture, uh, we use the Lambda functions. And so when we, as soon as we compile the Ballerina functional code, that uh, gives us the command, the uh, CLI command, to load this up into an AWS Lambda function. And so again, we ingest data using AWS API Gateway through webhooks or sometimes through uh, FTP uh, transfer family into an S3 bucket. And those are triggered to call the AWS, uh, the, the Lambda functions that's that are written in Ballerina to do change detection on payloads. Uh, to then write uh, the data if we're interested in it, uh, transform it and write it into the database. And if we happen to be, happen to be doing an integration along the way, uh, to take that transformed data and drop it into another SQSQ, which, again, is backed by um, a Ballerina Lambda function that says, okay, take this payload and post it to uh, an endpoint uh, for another vendor. And again, the packages that have been available to us to do this have given us tremendous velocity. I did not have to write anything to handle SQSQs or to handle notifications to clients. Uh, the uh, SES connector in Ballerina takes care of that for me. Uh, I didn't have to write uh, polling for the S3 bucket to see if an FTP payload had come in. Uh, that A, that's automatic with the infrastructure, but B, uh, it. Uh, the infrastructure triggers that Ballerina Lambda function for me. So there's just a tremendous velocity we get by not having to do undifferentiated heavy lifting. It's, uh, it's worth noting we have one more architectural and one more functional iteration that's kind of on our horizon. 
the next architectural iteration is to take the, uh, the ballerina functionality we've got where we do common things like uh, get the parameters for this process from the database uh, or log uh, incremental progress on this process into the database. Uh, we want to take those out of being compiled into each of the Lambda functions and instead make those Lambda functions on their own so that they get called directly. So that reduces our uh, code base uh, and, and it may increase some of our latency a bit, but it's going to make things simpler to, uh, to improve our functional code uh, without needing to uh, keep on maintaining some of the separate uh, tedium kind of code that we have to deal with. And then our, our next uh, functional I'll just leave the, the, the next functional iteration, I'll leave it as a question based on what we heard from Hard Rock earlier today. If I'm maintaining data from between five and 20 of your different HR systems in a common database, and I can tell you not only what it looks like in my model, but what it looked like in any of those systems, what might I be able to do with respect to employee experience with regards to their data? That's definitely a direction we want to go next. What Ballerina has done for us along the way, the integration capabilities are like the first big lever that we were able to pull. We've been able to seamlessly connect diverse HR systems. You know, one of the uh, packages that uh, is, exists in Ballerina Central is uh, the Paylocity connector. And that was built using Paylocity's open API specification. Now, I'll, I'll say it again in a few moments that uh, I, I always look in Ballerina Central for functionality now, because I did start pulling the uh, open API specification from Paylocity and started generating a, a Paylocity connector. And when I found that uh, they had already not only developed or uh, uh, generated this at WSO2, but they had refined it so that it actually worked. My first attempt did not work very well. So the, uh, the integration capabilities of Ballerina have been fantastic. Do you want to do an HTTP call? We got that. Do you, want to, do you need OAuth? Oh, we've got that. Oh, do you want mutual TLS authentication between endpoints? We've got that. So those are the kinds of things I did not have to develop out of, uh, from scratch. The transformation capability, I, I, I could not tell you how many Saxon XSLT transformations I've seen in the past 10 years. Uh, none of them is easy to understand. They are all terribly arcane and get more and more complex as you approach different systems, especially when you go to high-end ERP systems like Workday and SAP. But the Ballerina transformation model is much more powerful. You know, we still get transformations that don't look good in the data mapper because they're pretty complex, but the model of putting those into a function has, has just been tremendously powerful for us. And then combined with AWS's uh, event-driven infrastructure and the fact that, that Ballerina can plug hand in hand with that, we can do the entire data pipeline with minimal effort and everything just goes end to end, gets logged. Uh, we have special ways that errors get thrown up to us and we can go in and look at these anytime and remediate. So we've, we've really been happy with uh, Ballerina for the cloud data platform. Uh, let's see, we have some, some next evolutionary steps. The first one, I'd set this up, I thought this was going to be pretty cool, and then Sanjeeva said, oh, we've already got it this morning. But I'll, I'll show it to you anyway. Uh, yes, it does show here. Uh, we have, uh, this is pretty tactical, we have some consulting partners who want to look at the, the ecology of integrations that a company may have with their HR systems. So we are using the open API connector and a chatbot to interview a stakeholder. Ah, what is your current core HR system? Well, that's UKG Pro. Do you have an applicant tracking system? Yes, that's smart recruiters. Uh, do you have a learning management system? And so on and so forth. And, so, and we build the artifact that currently gets rendered in the Visual Studio Code plugin uh, under the architecture view as something like this. This gives our consulting partners the ability to inform a client, okay, here's what you really have out there. You thought you just had these two, but when we interviewed everyone, you had these 12. And it also tells them the level of maturity they have in their integrations. Are these bi-directional? Are these single directional? Uh, or how long are you, how are you able to keep these up? And uh, again, this morning, Sanjeeva introduced the, uh, the Corio uh, architect view that I now have to go talk with someone about. 
but it, it gives us what we're looking for here. I just, uh, it, now, the, the joy is, if I continued down this path, I would have to try and find the, uh, the library that would allow me to do the rendering on the fly, rather than write the artifact out and then go into Visual Studio Code. Now, if it's being done uh, transparently in something like uh, Corio's uh, architecture view, that sounds like an integration problem to me, and that's a lot easier for me to solve than a visualization problem. We're also working with Amazon's own uh, artificial intelligence, Bedrock. Uh, we're using Ballerina to orchestrate data between our big data model and the, the rapid response data set that uh, Amazon Bedrock uses in order to display uh, dashboards in QuickSight. And we want to be able to render, we have about 100 different kinds of metrics, interesting to an HR uh, um, audience that we want to be able to render to them. And we're, we're well on the way of being able to show this and letting them configure these on their own. This again, it's using Ballerina at the core, but it's allowing Amazon to do the heavy lifting on the visualization side. Uh, Ballerina for the data, let somebody else do the things that, that we're not as good at ourselves. And finally, um, Someone in the hard rock session asked about retrieval augmented generation. Uh, this is something else we're doing. Uh, artificial, the, the uh, generative AI uses vector mapping to map a question to potential answers that have been uh, then mapped into the database uh, via some process of, of converting textual information into uh, that vector. Uh, fortunately, our Postgres database has an extension that will allow vector mappings to be placed in there. But the, the, the first use case uh, that we're looking at is one in California, where I'm from. In California, if you have hourly employees, if they work a certain number of hours, they are supposed to get a meal premium in their pay. But the rules for that are very arcane. And so what we're putting together is a, a means of taking the rules and letting Ballerina convert those into vector mappings and put them into a database, and then letting Amazon Bedrock do, and the generative AI, allow us then to submit a set of time punches for a week, and not only uh, in the, whole, the final solution will it say, oh, you need to have a meal premium applied to your payroll, but also uh, here's the payroll input file that you need to send to your payroll company. And again, that's all powered by Ballerina with other things kind of waiting in the wings to, to do some of the work that we don't need to get to ourselves. Along the way, WSO2 has been a great partner for us. Uh, and we're a small, lean company. We don't pay huge support costs or anything like that. There was a company in uh, the UK that did server hosting, and they always touted fanatical support. Uh, WSO2 has something like Fanatical Plus or Fanatical Squared. I will put a question onto the Discord channel when I've gotten frustrated and given up for the evening, and quite often by the next morning, uh, I get up and I look there and there's the answer. Uh, and not only is it an answer to the question I wanted, but if I browse that Discord channel, I'll find lots of interesting things about Ballerina that, that I will find useful later on. Uh, uh, yesterday, Adapama had said that they uh, that on support, they wanted to give, uh, they wanted to, to have replies in a timely fashion, and I just find that it's, it's more than timely. Sometimes it feels like they're there typing the answer as I'm typing the question. The, uh, it feels like spam sometimes, but the number of webinars that the Ballerina community has going on uh, is just a constant flow. Uh, they're often in a time zone that is not convenient for me, but they are recorded. Today, I'm not terribly interested in gRPC, but I know there's a session out there, if I get to it, that I can uh, look up not just, here's the documentation for gRPC, but here's a practical implementation that you can try to make sure it works for you. And uh, a top-down engagement. I, I see Mary Ann in the, in the back. Uh, she's one of those who seems to type answers to me faster than, than, I, than uh, I can type them. And uh, I see people like Samira and scores others who, her, whose names are just listed down the side of that Discord channel continually answering questions. But there was, when we first looked at using OpenAPI uh, for this, uh, this back-and-forth interview with uh, HR stakeholders, some guy named Sanjeeva 
got into the, the chat and started asking me what I was looking for and what I was doing, and then took me into email, uh, not only to explain a little bit about their direction, but to offer resources to help give us leverage to move forward. Now, if you've got that kind of commitment, that kind of attention from a CEO, they're, they're really dedicated to support. And finally, there's, there's almost innovation on demand. I said earlier, uh, if I want something new, I first go check inside the Ballerina Central Repository. Sometimes it's, it's well, it used to be very hard to find something because you'd have to go page, page, page. Now that the search functionality is there, so if I, I, I did this just the other day, we'll, we'll talk later. Uh, I wanted to see about an SAP connector. And so I typed in SAP and it brought up the options. It did not bring up the option I wanted, so that's why we're going to talk. The conclusion is, you know, if I seem like uh, a Taylor Swift fan who hasn't gotten enough, then, then I think it's with good reason. Uh, WSO2 has been very good. The functionality of Ballerina has been fantastic. And we look forward to the next two or three iterations and, uh, and their continuing commitment to our success. Uh, that's what we've been most appreciative of. So now if you have questions about WSO2, about the architecture, or uh, how to do a shake and bake and pickleball, I'm, I'm here for you.